I'm Realtor Deb Tomorrow, and this is At Home in Bloomington, brought to you by Karen Russell, Ruoff Home Mortgage. We profile the people, places, and resources that make Bloomington Bloomington and help you live your best life at home in Bloomington. Hello, and welcome to At Home in Bloomington. I'm your host, Realtor Deb Tomorrow. And here once again with our fabulous sponsor, Ms. Karen Russell. Best day I'm lender in the state of Indiana. Hello. Hello. So uh, anyone who's listened to the show kind of knows our little routine that we keep Karen in the dark. But this time you have a little bit of knowledge. I can, of read, who our guest I can is. read the logo where. I know. I think we need to like tell people because this has happened but before. That's it. People walk in for the guests walk <laughs> yeah. in for the show and they are representing their yes. organization, which is awesome, and then they take their jackets off and we can see, and it ruins my whole plan. But I, no. <laughs> I was going to sit here with my eyes closed, I was going to wait and just let you talk, and then, um, but then I... But it's fine, because what do you know about our guest? Um, nothing, okay. except that he took the little mark off his last name. Oh, okay, he had yeah. an accent his last name. Yes, thank you. All right, well, I have a story, because you know, I always have a little introduction, yes. so to like introduce to you who our guest is. Um, so I'm going to do it even though you already know who our guests are. So here's an interesting tidbit about me. I once took a personality profile test thing that said I was the type of person, this is exactly what it said. It was kind of weird, but it would give you like examples. I was the type of person to have visited all the great museums in the world, but not the ones next door, which I thought was really interesting because actually at the time I took that test, I was living up in Indianapolis. I had just come back from France and Italy where obviously I've been to the Louvre and, you know, all mm -hmm. these famous museums. And uh, coincidentally, I lived next door to the Indianapolis Art Museum and probably had not been there since I was six years old. <laughs> and so when I read that on the personality test, I was like, oh, my God, get out of my head. Like, yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> but it's very true. So what we're doing with this show, I feel like I am attempting to rectify that by visiting some incredible places that are right next door in Bloomington and, and throughout with, you know, we had the Mathers Museum on uh, right. a few episodes ago. So that's what we're bringing you today is a one of a kind, world class, I, I hopefully I'm not exaggerating, a world renowned <laughs> museum that's right next door in Greene County. And that is the Sculpture Trails. So you've heard of it, right? No. I'm, you haven't heard of the Sculpture Trails? No, you... <laughs> So earlier, right before the show started, we were kind of talking and I, or you were giving the, uh, like the outline of how yeah. we were going to run things. And then I kind of giggled because you said something about whether you're new to Bloomington or you've been here a long time, right? Like every show we've done, everything's new to me. And I've been here for 25 years. <laughs> we, we don't let there. her out very I know, often. I was like, and Rachel said, I said, oh my gosh, like who knew I've been here? Where have I been? And she's like, you say that at every show. I've never heard of this, so I'm but intrigued. Our, okay, well, I learned about this really from our, our dear friend, Brittany Libert, uh, Green County Regional Title, mm -hmm. and she lives over in Green County, and so she's the one who kind of turned me on to what's going on with the sculpture trails, and she's been to some events out there. I'm surprised she hasn't, you weren't in on any of those conversations. Anyways, okay, I should get to our guests and quit rambling. So, Jerry Massey, who is the executive director, is that what we're calling you? Okay, executive director of the Sculpture Trails. And then Paul Watson, who is the artist in residence at the Sculpture Trails. So welcome. Thank you. So Thank you. which one of you wants to tell Karen here? <laughs> because I've actually been there, Karen. You didn't know this. I went out last week and had a personal tour of the Sculpture Trails with Paul. She's cheating. Yeah. See, I am so. cheating. I also didn't have to hike it. I got to ride it in a little golf cart kind of yeah. thing. So that was pretty nice, okay. too, because uh, it was awful muddy. But um, so paint the picture of what the Sculpture Trails is. Well. In 10 words or less. I'm yeah. just kidding. In 10 words or less. <laughs> well, you know what? I've been Sculpture Trails for the last 16 years. Paul here has been the artist and resident full time for the whole year, and he just signed up for a second year. So he is the guy when somebody shows up to Sculpture Trails, Mr. Paul Watson will be sitting there waiting on you. Awesome. And, and, and that's if you schedule a guided tour. Yeah. So. Yeah, um, when you, you pull up to the trails, we're a little tuck, tucked out of the way um, off of a 43 and 45, uh, but once you're back to our neck of the woods, you uh, on a sunny day, you can pull into our little uh, parking lot. You'll see the, the old tobacco barn. It's where some of our other um, uh, workshops operate out of. Uh, right behind that is the trailhead. It's the one spot in and out of the park. Um, 
there are outlets to our foundry in the lower field area, but where you park is where you're going to end up if you go for a walk and come back. That way, there's no no getting lost. Uh, right there, there's a signpost. It'll tell you the other local spots in the area. I know we, um, you know, we love the Ohos and we love the Tulip yep. Trestle that's out there. Um, and there also are laminated brochures that have all of the information for the sculpture and the uh, work that's out there. Um, so, how many acres do you have out there? There are 50 acres. Okay. And we have carved with shovels and wheelbarrows and... It's a daunting task uh, yeah. to maintain. Over all these years, yeah. we've been building a building a building, and we're about two and a half to three miles so with you have 150 sculptures. Big, giant... Okay, no, no, take a second. And, okay, you're about gorgeous that. Green County, right? Mm-hmm. I, one thing I will always say about Greene County, it is one of the most gorgeous counties in Indiana. The land is beautiful. So you've got gorgeous Greene County, 50 acres, trails carved through, and then you just come upon some massive and some tiny sculptures, sculptures cast iron sculptures. That would be wild. I mean, how long does someone spend out there? I mean, how long, if you really wanted to, like, see everything that's out there, are we talking, like, a couple of hours or? You, the best part about Sculpture Trails is it, it customizes everything. I mean, in every level. Um, when, when we get a lot of field trips, when they show up, we know they have an hour and a half and they got to be back on the bus. Yeah, right. So we just schedule the walk. There's no way we could possibly do a guided tour with every 150 pieces. Mm-hmm. So, you know, a guided tour is going to be more like, um, you know, a good skim of the collection. Sure. And then, you know, of course, answer anybody's questions. But it would be good to plan on a couple hours. Okay. Yeah, if you're coming out just for a walk, I'd say, if, you know, you could come out two, three, four times and see mm-hmm. something different every time. But that being said, you, you know, you could spend as little as a half hour, as long as two, three hours, easy. Um, if you walk the whole outer loop, you're looking at uh, just about uh, two and a half miles and then everything else in between, you're getting close to... Close to three, a little, little over. So, that. what's fascinating to me is that it's it is set up like an outdoor museum, mm-hmm. and so the first thing that struck me as we entered in is you said, "I'm going to take you to the first gallery," <laughs> and I was like, "Huh? Okay." Like I didn't think about it, but it truly was. We went there, and there is just sort of a space card out, and it has a gallery feel to it. Mm. Of you can kind of stand in one place, and you can see lots of different exhibits and you go around in a circle and then you continue on when you're done with that gallery. So what type of sculpt, like what's the material? Because in my head I first thought that maybe they were using the wood and things that are in that space and that, you know, where you've cleared out and like maybe did things like carving or something like that. But so they're cast iron, which is a big part and we're going to kind of get to that in the second part when we talk about their foundry is is a big part and and what makes them so special is because they're able to create these really artists can come in and create really large pieces because they have the facilities to Mm. enable them to do so am i right on that oh yeah see i was listening Mm -hmm. okay so no cost right there's no cost either so you can go out there as often as you like and just take it in little bits and pieces it is based on an honor system yeah. Open and, and free every day. Uh, one of my favorite experiences at other sculpture parks is when there is nobody there. Yeah. And I showed up, and the the shack was empty, and they just had the arm up, and we went in, and and then we threw a couple bucks in when we left. Yeah. And so we designed sculpture trails, knowing that I'm going to be living 200 miles away. Yeah. Um, we we designed it with that in mind, that it's just open and free from sun up to sundown. And um, that's just how it's always been. And we're on our 16th year of free art for the community. 16 years, Karen. I know. I'm I'm <laughs> saying off, off the mic, like, <laughs> that's wild that you don't live here, not even close. Yeah. I mean, that's what, like three hours, yeah. like three hours away? And that, um, but that you have this business where, yeah, you just have it open. So why Green well, County? The main reason is... Uh, my family moved here when I was nine, and I went through the school system, and um, I ended up at Heron School of Art in Indianapolis, and that was really the first time 
I seen sculpture, I seen metal being melted, I seen how to make my art last longer than my life. I never even thought of that. Um, mm. So, um, and instantly I thought, man, I gotta bring this back and teach the kids where I'm from. They, none of, nobody's heard of any of this stuff. And I just, I just graduated. And so after eight years of that, I ended up teaching sculpture and then um, eventually it just turned into sculpture awesome. trailers. Yeah, uh, all, all based on need, like um, the artist in resident program. We didn't have one. And finally an artist said, hey, I want to do the artist in resident program. I said, well, we don't have one. So we made one, and then it just started. And now, I can't remember, it might be the fifth, sixth. Yeah. But every year it gets better, 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 better. And I think what is, was interesting that I learned about the sculpture trails is that maybe a little bit different than a traditional art gallery where it's about displaying the art, you're also helping in the creation of the art, and you're very focused on sort of spreading the word about um, cast sculptures and that process, mm -hmm. which was absolutely fascinating to me. And I hope we get to it because I was just like, there's so much, it's, it's more than art, there's science and there's engineering. And some of these sculptures, what, what what's one of the biggest sculptures that you have out on the trail? Well, I guess the UFO visitation piece. Yeah, size, size wise. Size wise, that one, I think it reaches about 30. Oh. <laughs> The visitation piece in the field, I believe it reaches 30 feet when the wind lifts up. And that one was at the Chicago Pier. Oh, okay. And, and when it came down, it went into a storage facility, and the artist had to get it out in a hurry. And he was my former professor. And he had mentioned, hey, if you want that piece at Sculpture Trails, you need to get it, or i got to scrap it. So we went and we, we brought it back, and uh, he's coming back this summer, and he finally gets to see it for the huh. first time. Did you see that on your... Uh, yes, yeah, so it was the tall, shiny one, right? In the lower field. Yeah. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah and yeah. you said when the wind blows, so does it... It's on a... Like, okay, like yeah, on a... Teeter, it'll raise up. Te okay, teeter up. Yeah. And it spins around. It's yeah. in a different uh, position every time you see it. That's cool. And some of these are hundreds and hundreds of pounds. Yeah, I was going to say the opposite to what Jared, that one being, you know, 30 feet up. We yeah. Have, you, we have one that's no more than three, four feet tall, but it's a solid 1,400 pound casting. And that Gosh. that's a reason why some of these artists yeah. seek us out is because in the art world, that, that's a lot to offer artists. Like here's 1,400 pounds of molten iron and there's your right. art, you know, and now that piece can exist. Right. One of the things that struck me, and, and I would encourage people as you're walking through the trails, is not just to appreciate the art, but to appreciate how it got to its resting location. <laughs> when yeah, when thank you go you, down and you. see the foundry, <laughs> yeah. and see that we made everything right there mm -hmm. in the sand pit. And the, the foundry is truly a building with two walls and a roof. Yep. We don't even have a front wall or a back wall. Yeah, there's no fancy so, machinery hiding. There's no there's no lulls. Or it's intern hides. labor. Yeah, it's, right? all, yeah. <laughs> it's just, you know, just interns and cranes. And yeah, but I mean, to haul it up some of these hills, I mean, the hills, I, I, I think the trails are fairly um, accessible in the sense that they're they're relatively flat, but they're slopes. It's Green County, you know. And on that though, just if anyone listening, uh, we we do have an electric cart for handicap accessibility. So if nice. that is an issue, people are hearing thinking that's we yeah. Can so they could call ahead that. and yes. uh, yeah, and schedule right. a tour, and you yeah. could yeah. Awesome, that's great. Um, so you know, there's there's a lot going on out there. So we talked a little bit about the artist in residence program. So Paul, what are your duties as the artist in resident besides? friendly greeter and I guess you give the tours yeah a lot of um, a lot of the day-to-day -day on site um, well it sounds like we'll talk about July uh, yeah. after the break uh, so the the day-to-day -day in the off season for me is um, a lot of a lot of groundskeeping you know for one person the 50 acres and three miles there's a lot a lot to keep clear especially you know come the fall of leaf blowing every week getting out there to keep things open keep it clear so when people come out you know they can see that the place is cared for and that's you know, that's uh, that, that passion that reinvigorates every July that, you know, that's like, wow, this is why we want to. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm sort of just on site to, you know, a anyone that comes out, just be there to like, oh, you want to learn about any of this? You want to do, yeah. you know, and that's the. 
and create and you're creating at the same time though right yes yeah <laughs> so, in exchange so you're not just the landscaper right, but you're yeah, the artist as well for that um I, i've actually just finished a just about finished with a piece it's out in the woods now it still has a little bit left to go but mm -hmm. i've uh, it's something I've been working on since I started the job here last January. It's so it's about a, a year in the making. Wow! Well, and it's just now getting installed. Yeah. yeah. And I think that it's just something that people don't realize some of these uh, pieces of work and how long it takes to create them and and what goes into it. Um, it's just I, I really want to encourage people to to stop by and listen and ask questions. Now they can go to your website, which is sculpturetrails.com, right? That's right. Um, and if you're interested in a guided tour, which is just a few bucks, so it's not very expensive or you can get a group together. Um, really, that's a nice way to get started. I think to acclimate yourself to the sculpture mm -hmm. trail. And yeah, I'm sure Paul yeah. would love to stay busy doing that. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And then yeah, coming back the and, and just doing, you know, little bits here and there. It's located about 20 minutes from Bloomington. Um, if you know where Yoho General Store is, it's about four or five miles from there. That's right. um, there's really good signage out there, so you can call me and I will tell you exactly how to get there because I can get there with my eyes closed. I know that part of the country, um, but it's a really easy drive. But yeah, you guys have done a great job with signage. Uh, yeah. I mean, every turn it's like, here's the arrow, here's where you go. So yeah. that makes it really, really easy. If you buy your Christmas trees in Greene County, it's just down the road from there, That's too. That's right. Um, which is why they call it Tree Farm Road. So Eastern Greene County, 20 minutes from Bloomington, probably about 20 minutes from Spencer and about 20 minutes from Bloomfield, too. You're probably right about brand equidistant in there. And brand new road, freshly paved, so um, in great shape. When we come back, we're going to talk about why we keep mentioning July, because it's your biggest month out there at Sculpture Trails. There's a lot going on for artists. Um, and budding artists, but also for the general public, that's really kind of the big month. Um, so we're going to talk about what's going on with that and also uh, some other things that you have going on in the community. So stick around. You're listening to At Home in Bloomington. Hi, this is Karen Rastel with Ruoff Home Mortgage. Did you know that you can often save money by purchasing your own house instead of paying rent? There are a lot of perks in owning a home of your own. So contact me today at 812-606-7653 so I can help you invest your hard-earned money for yourself instead of your landlord. Ruoff Home Mortgage is an Indiana corporation licensed by the Indiana Department of Financial Institutions. This is not an offer for extension of credit or a commitment to lend. All loans must satisfy company underwriting guidelines, equal housing lender, NMLS number 141868. This is your Real Estate Realist. Practical advice on buying and selling real estate based on my experience closing over 800 home sales. You may have read that there is a real estate shortage in some areas, not enough homes for people who are wanting to buy. This seems to be true for Monroe County, especially when it comes to affordable homes. In many price ranges, homes are selling for well over list price. As a result, one strategy for buyers is to explore some areas that you haven't previously considered. I have clients buying right now in Greene County, Owen County, Lawrence County, and Morgan County, mostly because of affordability issues. Many of those communities can be vibrant communities with sometimes different but awesome characteristics. So maybe your life will take you in a direction that's a little different than you thought. Here are some ideas to practice living in an area you hadn't considered. Number one, do the drive to and from your usual places, work, church, friends, do them several times. The first time driving will always seem the longest. Number two, if you have to get up earlier to go to work, try that out for a few weeks. If you anticipate a 20-mile drive to work, map out a route from your current home that will go the same distance. Get up earlier and see how that impacts your mornings. Number three, live in an Airbnb in the new location for a week while going about your normal activities. The money you spend may be well worth feeling confident with buying a home in an area you hadn't considered. Number four, talk to people. Go to events, get involved, check out their Chamber of Commerce and Visitors Bureau. And number five, work with a realtor who knows that area. I help people buy and sell in Green, Owen, and Lawrence County as well as Monroe. I can connect you with resources to help you learn more about the areas you're considering. For more information on what it's like to live in Green and Owen counties, listen to my Real Real Estate Today podcast number 92 and 93. You can find it on iTunes, my YouTube channel, and at www.athomeinbloomington.com. My name is Donna, and my realtor is Deb Tomorrow. When it comes time to buy or sell a home, she is the obvious choice. Deb is not your average realtor. She stands beside you all the way. 
before, during, and after your real estate transactions. Deb is passionate about real estate and it shows. So just do it. Choose Deb. Now back to the show. Okay, welcome back to At Home in Bloomington with our guests from the Sculpture Trails. Before we get back to them and talk about the month of July, which is a very big deal out there, I want to share our Facebook follow. Um, And this is, I want to encourage you to make it a day in Greene County and Eastern Greene County by adding a visit to Yoho's General Store to your visit to the Sculpture Garden. And you can follow them on Facebook for some of the stuff that they have going on. It's a general store. It's also got sort of a casual restaurant, ice cream, coffee, gas. But it's got an awesome history, too. The building has been restored back to sort of its 1960s glory. I think it originally went up in the 30s. But um, 1960s glory. And the same group that restored Yoho's is the one, a group that restored West Baden down in French Lake. Uh, which is cook. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's pretty amazing to think that like little old Yoho's got restored by the same people that did this massive project down in West Baden. So, um, so actually I think you need to do, this is your itinerary for the day, right? You get up and go out to Yoho's, have some breakfast, go uh, burn your calories by walking around the sculpture trail and then go check out and then go back to Yoho's and have some ice cream and then (laughs) keep on going down the road and check out the, the tulip trestle, um, which is another big uh, uh, site there in Greene County, which is the largest, tallest train trestle, uh, hmm. I think, in the state. It's is big. Yeah. At it's the big. time, it was the biggest the and big. the best. Yeah, it was yeah. pretty awesome. So and it still works. Yeah. yeah, it still works twice a day. Yeah, so and Santa Claus mm-hmm. comes in on it and all that yeah. stuff. So you can definitely make a nice little day trip um, into Eastern Green County. There is stuff going on out there for sure. So, all right. What is this July thing that we keep talking about? July, July, July. July Why July, is July well, such a big deal out at the sculpture trails? Um, in my eyes, sculpture trails is really, um, a few different levels. There's of course what we've been talking about, what, what's there for the community. Mm-hmm. There's the, the museum they can go see all the time. There's the workshops they could take. They could go to old tobacco barn.com and sign up for a workshop every single month. And um, they can also come out and do a tour and a pour. And that's what we're promoting like crazy now in 2019. You can get on the website and schedule a guided tour with Paul and an aluminum pour. And we'll let you carve a little bit of uh, into a sand mold and then we'll pour the metal in and you can go home with a little sculpture. Yeah, and I want to paint the picture to Karen for that because it's like, I was like, because, okay, so our friend Brittany, who introduced us to Sculpture Trails, talks about the scratch block, scratch block, scratch scratch block, and I'm like, what are you saying? I don't even understand this. So I got to see it from my own eyes, but basically it's a, what, I don't know, eight by seven. Okay, five by seven block, and it's filled with sand, but the sand has some resin in it, so it gets kind of hard, Mm -hmm. and then you can carve it. Yeah, that's right. It's a two-part glue you mix into just loose sand, and when it sets, it's, you know, rock solid, but you can carve, you can carve away, so it's it's an open face relief mold, so like, the equivalent to making like an ice cube, you know, you you would be carving like the bottom of that ice cube, so so when you pop the aluminum out, you get what you just got. So then they pour it in the aluminum, then you go do your walking around the trails, and when you come back, then the aluminum is like hardened up enough that you can take it with you, and you have a little, your own little sculpture of whatever you carve. How cool is that? And what's it cost? The uh, guided tour is only two dollars, and the casting is only twenty. Twenty bucks, man! And I think all that does is just keep the place open and free for the public. You know, the more of those we can do, the more free ones. It's always open and free, so yeah, you can always grab a sandwich at Yoho's, have a little picnic at Sculpture Trails, and head on out. When there's folks in town, you need a place to go. But when you want to do something extra cool, do a pour and tour. I need, awesome? do, I need to do that with Jonathan when he comes back home. Yeah, absolutely. My right, son, so. um, he lives in Florida. And he'll be home visiting, and he would totally get oh, into yeah. that. Yeah. Right on. yeah. And so they would just go onto the website and call, or is there right an online? On the website, yeah. There's an online form. So they can they just, just say. Fill it out, submit it, and then we'll respond immediately. And that we want to go that's and do it. this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's so cool. And I, I can't even imagine what I would carve, but yeah. would, I'm sure it would end up being. Well, every time you learn a hot something, mess, and you'll, but... uh, after the first one, you'll want to do it again. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Again. For sure. Um, but, you know, that's that's locally, and that's what we have, you know, for the, the community around us. And now, July is our big heartbeat, is our passion. Yeah. And um, without passion, I don't think the place would work. Yeah. 
the place is truly driven by passion. Nobody's actually, there's no big money going anywhere. It's all, why would anybody want to work um, that hard and sweat and bleed and cry? And then... <laughs> Um, get burnt. And get burnt. I mean, I think we used a lot of skin this year. Yeah. Had, you know, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, this year, um, you know, the July brings together an international audience, an uh, international group, um, and it brings together skills from around the world in an area that we love. And so when um, um, a young girl from China comes to be part of our team, and she she discovers something new within the process, or brings something new that stays. You know, uh, the kid from Florida when he shows up with this great new idea to do with the propane, it stays. Mm -hmm. So now we're getting ready to do our tenth year in a row, and we've accumulated hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of of all of these artists coming together and building. And it doesn't look like a lot there, but um, when we come together and we put what we all have. Um, leave egos out of it mm -hmm. and keep creativity super high. We can build stuff uh, beyond the own, the, beyond the artist's imagination, no doubt. Mm -hmm. I can guarantee it. And that artist shows up with a model. I know it's going to be better than that when they leave, and they'll probably be gone in seven days. It's how fast we are. And right? do yeah. you have a limit of how many artists can can yes. come and participate? We do have a strict limit. We only let five a week sign up for this. And that is it. And it's first come, first serve. And there's only 11 spots left. Okay. So and it's three weeks. So that they that's... have the artists out. And what makes this so special is that every artist kind of gets their own little workshop space in the foundry where they can do carvings. And they can come with as much pre-prepared or just kind of wing it if they want. It's really their time. But what makes it so special, I thought, was that uh, in conjunction with the artists, you have probably hopefully around 25 interns and the interns are what's making the world go round mm -hmm. during that week because they are helping do these pours of mm -hmm. these of this iron and and my understanding is that it's such a special thing for artists because it's rare to have that much help to be able to do these pours that are this massive you really need a team of people that's right yeah. pouring i mean I, I, the numbers you were throwing out for how much iron's being melted and this and that i my i, I can't even just doesn't even make the, sense to me just in the month of july we melted um about thirty-seven thousand pounds and I, I, and so coming from a college setting where we did it uh, each semester, mm -hmm. each year, we, we, had a, we had a really good program in Boston, and we did maybe eight to 10,000 in a good year. That's in a full year. In a year. So in one month, in 30 days at the yeah. trails, we poured four or five times the amount I saw in my entire college yeah. Uh, curriculum yeah. so when you come out here for a month that's what you know that's and you, you when really you get a chance to pour to set up a foundry and pour it 12 times in a row within a few days and switch positions and switch positions and switch positions we don't let anybody do the same thing twice we even let the kids run the furnace they, they lay the beds they restore the every time um, we run that furnace it rips itself to pieces so we fix it so they learn all of mm -hmm. that. So when they go home, they're able to show their school and their sculpture department. They've learned everything. How to make everything way better, more efficient. Mm -hmm. They'll get a higher quality casting. They'll be safer. And they're going to keep the object alive and well. Yeah. And there's um, some really good YouTube videos that I've seen that I know are on your Facebook page that we'll make sure we have up on ours as well that kind of show some of this action going on. I have to say one of the things I was – and this is like complete. I'm not an artist. I, I, you know, I don't even finger paint. So I'm looking at things from just a really outsider perspective. I was fascinated by the whole breaking the iron down. Like you, where do you get your iron from? Um, we, we get it from a Bloomington iron and metal. Um, they usually put aside a good pile for us because mm -hmm. they know every July we're going to need, you yeah. know. Uh, so it's recycled material. It's recycled material yeah. to begin with, but um, if, uh, people don't know things like uh, bathtubs, uh, radiators, uh, window weights, sinks, brake rotors, uh, all the way up to, you know, four inch thick Bring slab castings. Okay. I was going to say, I have a bunch of window weights in my but garage. But these are all things that we have to, for our furnaces, uh, we, we can't just throw them in holes. So uh, for an hour of every morning, every morning of July, we, we all sit out with sledgehammers and break break the iron down to the uh, proper charging size. And 
Jerry likes to call it our morning yoga. <laughs> but there's a pile yeah. out there of, you know, sure. working and you can see like that was a piece of an old, you know, furnace or yeah. whatever and uh, a radiator and you can see some of the decorative and, and what's really cool is that sometimes the little decorative pieces that were from, you know, old broken down cast aside radiators have been integrated into some of the sculptures, mm -hmm. which I always kind of dig to see that too. But it's just amazing to me to to, I, that's what I want to say. I want to co come in one morning and just see y'all sitting in a circle with sledgehammers breaking yeah. iron apart. But yeah, nine nine a.m. any morning there you go. in July. Just join you in, right? Yeah, nine a.m. So the interns come in and they usually camp out. The artists camp out as well. They mm -hmm. have that opportunity. Okay. Um, some will stay at a bed and breakfast that, okay. that's close by or up here in Bloomington. Okay. But you're really taking the full benefit of this place if you're camping. You know, if you're on on scene for everything, you know, there's we we don't miss a beat out there. It's mm -hmm. uh, you know. When you take that workshop, um, we start at nine a.m. sharp, yeah. and we we don't clock out till at least one to three in the morning. And why you do a lot of your pouring at night? We will. We will do all of our pouring at night. We okay. start at nine a.m. or nine p.m. Yeah, and we're done by midnight. So, and um, what's the reason for that? It's too hot. It's too yeah. hot. Yeah, too in July. Yeah, we'd heat stroke in ten twenty minutes if we were trying to pour the amount of metal at the temperature of midday. Yeah. Uh, now, we have tried to get up real early and do it when it's cool. Yeah, but then you lose the whole entire crew for the rest of the day. Yeah. So we might as well get all of our chores done, gotcha. and then at nine o'clock at night, when we're almost done anyway, let's yeah. just use the rest of our energy. Right. One last push. One last push. And so during the month of July, you've got the artists and the interns helping them, and your uh, and the interns are also creating at that time too. A lot of them That's are right. college students, right? So yep. they get that opportunity to create as well, yep. alongside people, artists from all over the world, which is what's yeah. amazing to me. And they're installing uh, pieces uh, on the trails. And what are the things that the um, public would be wanting to see or be involved in that month? Well, uh, if, if I didn't know about sculpture trails, what would be super cool to accidentally discover would to show up July 1st week and see what everybody's doing. And show up every single week and watch how these artists transform that place into uh, one, of, one of the best cast iron sculpture workshops on the planet. In the world, yeah. In yeah. the this world. Is, this yeah. is, yeah, huge. And then you'll see these kids that came in literally from the whole country, all over, never have worked together, but within 30 days, 30,000 pounds of metal later, they will without talking, be able to pour that metal mm. sweeter, um, better than anybody. Mm. And we proved that with a pour we call the shotgun pour, machine gun pour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we run two furnaces at the same exact time. And that means Instead that of cuts a, their dance right in half. Mm -hmm. We usually have about seven minutes between 100 to 200 or more pounds. But with that running, it's like you have a three and a half minute. And then that's even cut because of the stagger. Yep. Yeah, so it's a, so it's a dance. Times, sometimes you don't have enough people, you know. There's but, not enough people, yeah. and the furnaces are making metal. Mm -hmm. well. You can't slow those furnaces down. And what's cool is that as the public, the, the way it's set up, the foundry's sort of at the bottom of the hill, so you can just kind of sit on the hillside, right, and perch up there and mm -hmm. watch it going on. And, right, and, and then back to what you were saying, um, if they did show up weekly, the fire at night event, yeah. would they would probably cry. It would mean so much to them to see... I mean, by the end of that time, I mean, we had um, young artists, we're not even 25 yet, with 3,000 pound sand molds that are getting 1,500 pounds of metal in them. They're doing things that they've never done their whole entire lives, and they probably will never get to again. Yeah. Or so would, they, yeah, would have been able to do to begin there's with. There's no so other way they could have ever done it. Like and you had highlighted, that yeah, crew. Each yeah. one of those kids, when you're up in that audience and you've seen them the whole month, you know they've pushed themselves harder than they've ever had. They know mentally, physically, they now can go more than ever. Yeah. And look what they've all done. Look, two of them just went to the hospital, and I'll get my scratch blocks tomorrow. <laughs> and um, then that, you know what that does is that shows what, you know, that's where artists go to create place, mm -hmm. to create the, all their work. Yeah. There's a time in every sculpture where you got to go there. you got to go beyond what you, you can do. And 
We're all about teaching that to the, yeah. the young artists. So the Fire at Night event, uh, oh, there's an evening towards the end there, of July that it takes place. Uh, the whole entire day is the, always the very last Saturday of July. Okay. It's always that day. And then the annual aluminum pour um, is the second the second Saturday of every July. Okay. Um, and that's another uh, food truck music yeah. um scratch blocks, scratch scratch blocks, blocks available and, yeah. and we'll pour every hour on the hour yeah. and uh, even do a little iron teaser usually so people know what to get excited for gotcha. year in a row we'll have the aluminum wow pour. that's yeah. awesome yeah. so definitely everyone should uh i guess follow you on social media facebook and and keep an eye on the website but i think social media is a good place it'll pop into your timeline yeah. and you'll be like yeah, in July. oh the, yeah some of the coolest we videos you could ever see mm -hmm. too on the sure. sculpture trails yep. facebook and then you have some other things going on beyond the sculpture trails that i wanted to make sure that we highlight um one is sculpture in public places yes ma'am we have a program that highlights a group of work and the the program the focus is to educate everybody about public sculpture and one thing that's always bothered us is um, public sculpture that's just left and there's no love for it ever again there's a celebration at the beginning, mm -hmm. but then it's gone. This program um, provides opportunity, and that's what makes it successful. Um, it's already starting to take over pretty good. Yeah, um, six locations. Um, well, Skill Trails being six. She won't let us move that one. <laughs> um, but, um, well, right, uh, five locations now. Throughout Greene County and, and throughout the Owen Green County, County and too, Owen, right? That's right. And what they do is they make an annual donation. And um, they're all different donations, but um, in general, the donation goes to the idea of this program. And what's attached to it, basically, is every two years, the sculptures rotate. So it, within the eight years, you get all the sculptures, mm -hmm. not just one. And so instead of putting all this money into something people don't see very quickly, now you can celebrate the arts every two years. We bring in these interns from July, and so you're not only helping the local community and supporting the local art scene, you're also helping support a much larger international scene. Mm -hmm. and these kids, they don't learn in college how to move big, giant sculptures and how to take care of them, how to restore um, them, how to properly give them to the public. Hmm. And when they leave, and they now they know, hey, I can move a 6,000-pound <laughs> sculpture and restore it, and I know how to put the zinc in it and retap it and put it, and lay that cement level plumb and square. And, right. and we can still be back by dinner. And we can be back <laughs> by dinner. That's right. Yeah, but see, what I, what I was saying, I think, over a break was that, you know, it's fascinating to me that this is just not about art. It's about there's science and there's engineering and there's, you know, when you were talking about we've got to pour this concrete block and it goes eight, four feet under the ground so yeah. it can support this sculpture mm -hmm. and it'll never go anywhere. We put this one up, but the rod that was running through the middle because it's so tall to hold it up wasn't enough and it was swaying too much. So we had to take it down and redo. I mean, there's that aspect of it, too. And you're right. I mean, that's a real world aspect that you may not necessarily get in a university setting so and i love this idea of you know the, every two years the sculpture changes because you're right sometimes the sculptures they just sort of blend in and we just get used to seeing them and we don't see them anymore because we just kind of pass by and so shake things up i'm sure there's people that go what well, something's different here that's right mm -hmm. so that's owen right. valley valley winery is one spot eastern right. green uh, elementary school eastern is another green spot the Bloomfield the library. library is another spot so um that's a great program that you guys have going on and then another program i wanted to touch on real quick is the travel Foundry, yes, um, which I thought was a cool idea as well. That program was the very beginning of Sculpture Trails, and in 2002, when we founded the place, we decided to have an annual aluminum pour right on the property, and that would give us a couple hundred bucks to buy cement to bolt sculptures down to in the woods. That was it, because um, I was spending too much money on cement, and, I, <laughs> and my wife was said, "Hey." you got to think of some other way. <laughs> so um, a lot of this um, was driven a lot by my wife, Lisa. Uh, gotta say. Shout out to her. So shout out to Lisa. <laughs> 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 um, so the Traveler Foundry was formed um, in general as a fundraiser for the museum. And to this day, it still does a really good job at that. And um, one, way, one thing we like to do is um, everything's based with education. So we target schools and um, get them to it's a really easy thing to get a grant for because we can have a hundred 
kids all carve these scratch blocks that we were talking about. Then we come back and we pour all of the metal and we bolt that sculpture to the wall. And the kids create the image. We blow it all up so it's a great big giant cool image. Think of like a grid enlargement, you mm-hmm. know, take a theme and then, mm-hmm. you know. And, and the kids love it. And when, Interesting. And when they're elementary kids, and then to think that they can come back when they're, gra- you know, as right. grandparents and show their right. five-year-old, hey, look, I made that when I was 12. Yeah. And then think about all the days of school that you went and you forgot. Yeah. This will be a day when those crazy guys showed up with a foundry. <laughs> right. And poured all this metal and made this sculpture and bolted it to my school. And I was part of that. A hands-on, wow. a real hands-on project. Yeah. And that's going away. And uh, that's something that I think is really important. And yeah. bringing this little foundry around in a nice way to, to show the kids that, hey, we could put our cell phones down. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. do something pretty cool that you you could be proud of. You know? So teachers out there, or school administrators, if you're listening, this would be a good uh, get a hold of me. It's an easy way to, to get a grant because you're affecting the whole entire school. Yeah. We when we bring that foundry, the kids can come out on the hour, and we pour at least five times. Yeah. Mm. And so when science comes out, we'll change our our whole spiel to science. Mm. When history comes out, we'll talk history of, yeah. of the foundry. Mm-hmm. And uh, the kids are just blown away, especially the elementary kids yeah. are our absolute favorite. And that's like at that age too. Like I didn't know, you know, I I knew of metal sculpture before college, but not like metal yeah. arts. You know, like mm-hmm. seeing the process is so. That's what you need sometimes, just to know that that's an outlet for right. creative expression. Is like I can do that like right. that, and mm-hmm. it's like right. you know so that's all, know early all it that takes. That it's right. possible. Go be an artist. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. All right. Well, we are out of time, but thank you so much for joining us, Karen. I hope you're inspired. <laughs> I'm definitely as always. She's always like, I have goosebumps every show, right? <laughs> no, it's you just, come out? You know, I will we be will out there. We will suit you up and make you pour iron. <laughs> I will do that. Yeah, I want to get we on, on the scratch block action, so we, that, we may have easy. to do a little group tour on that. So We have a new bowl. You can make a bowl. Now. I saw that um, somewhere, like Facebook or something, you were talking about a so doodle cool. bowl or whatever, and that's I was right. like, I don't know what that is, but that's really cool. I want to check that Everybody's out, too. Everybody's doing their so hot. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, so sculpturetrails.com. Check out on Facebook and on their website. And uh, and just make a day of it and uh, explore Eastern Green. There's a lot going on there and a lot of really cool stuff. Thank you again for joining us, and we will be back with another episode of At Home in Bloomington. Got a show idea? I'd love to hear it. And be sure to contact me for all your real estate needs and questions, too. You can email me at deb at realrealestatetoday.com and follow me on Facebook at Deb Tomorrow Realtor. To contact Karen Rastel for all your mortgage needs, call 812-606-7653 or log on to ruoff.com and go to the Bloomington Center. Thanks to all the Bloomington people who make production of At Home in Bloomington possible. Special thanks to superstar producer Rachel Dreek Gregorio, digital guru Cynthia Hogan at Monster Digital Marketing for website design and hosting, and video genius Wes Lasher in the production house for engineering the show.